Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. As I've done every year, this video is about the BMAT, and I'll be giving you some final tips to help you prepare as effectively as you can for your upcoming exam in just over 10 days. Now, because I've made lots of videos about this before, I've summarised today's videos into three main sections. Equations, past paper mistakes, and also timing. I'll go through those three sections telling you why each of them is so important in this last period before your exam. For those of you who don't know, I'm Sen, I'm a fourth year medical and engineering student here at Cambridge and I, well, make a variety of fun videos, from these advice videos to a few vlogs to some more interesting techie videos. Anyway, moving on, I'd like to thank Medify for making this video possible. Their BMAT question bank is fantastic in giving you further opportunities in doing BMAT questions. Of course you have the extensive pass paper list, but a lot of you have finished those, and so the BMAT question bank with the explained answers from Medify will be extremely useful to help you do as many questions as you can before your exam. Now the three things I mentioned, the first one is equations. In these last few days, you must, must get on top of your equations. Let me tell you why it's so important. In math, we have equations from polygons allowing us to work out the interior and exterior angles. In chemistry, we have equations, for example, balancing equations. We have redox reactions. In physics, we have equations for electricity, for forces. And in biology, we have equations from respiration and photosynthesis. So it's clear that equations are all throughout section two, but also in some parts of section one, particularly when it comes to geometry and problem solving. And so that's why it's important that you get on top of your equations. And what I suggest is that you sit down in the next two days and for each subject, for maths, chemistry, physics and biology, write down all the basic equations from GCSE. I would actually suggest going through the GCSE specifications because the specifications usually do highlight very clearly the relevant equations. And trust me, the BMAT doesn't really ask for any more equations than the GCSE specifications show. If you're slightly switched on, you can fast track this and just Google GCSE physics equation sheet and so you get people who've made their own equation sheets and uploaded them on Google you can just use that and that saves you time. Now memorize these equations and trust me they'll save your life on the BMAT. In section 1 you have a minute and a half per question, in section 2 you have a minute per question and in section 3 well that's an essay but in sections 1 and 2 these equations are critical in helping you do the questions quickly then giving you time to double check them ensuring every single question you answer is correct allowing you to perform that 10% or even 15% better in the exam. Now moving on to my second main part, past paper mistakes. Every time you make a mistake in the next few days, make sure you stop and quickly revise that topic, but also the equations linked to that topic. Understand why you're making these mistakes, that's critical. If you're making these mistakes a few days before the exam and you don't consolidate on the material that these questions are based on, you will pretty much guaranteed make those same mistakes in the exam. So if you do make mistakes, don't panic, don't start thinking, oh gosh, I'm going to fail. No, that's not the way to think. The way to think is, right, I'm always screwing up these questions and forces in these physics questions in section two. Let me quickly spend 10 minutes revising these equations, understanding them again, maybe watch a YouTube video on forces, and then you can sort that out there and then. So my second point again, make sure you really, really go through your mistakes and understand the topics behind these mistakes. Because in 10 days time, when you do do the BMAT, you will thank yourself so much. Now, of course, many people say to you, yes, the BMAT section one, you have a minute and a half per question roughly. In section two, you have a minute per question. And in section three, you have half an hour to write an essay. However, that's not my point. My point is that the BMAT is a very, very, very long exam. It's two hours with three sections. And you might think you have time off between the sections, but you really don't. Most likely, as section one finishes, your school teachers will put out section two, and as section two finishes, they'll put out section three. So at most, you'll get a few minutes between the sections, which is quite intense. So you must practice at least two or three times doing a full two-hour practice mock exam. By doing this, you can realize how section one is difficult, but it tires you out allowing you to then develop some perseverance to do well in section two, regardless of being tired. And once section two is finished, you can then bring up some motivation to do section three as well as you can. The thing is, you can only work on this again and again by doing it a few times before the exam. 
Otherwise, you will find yourself in the exam having been burnt out after section one or having been burnt out after section two and not being able to do well in section three. Over the years, I've seen time and time again how some people have done extremely well in one section but completely flopped in the other section. And this is a shame because they're very clever people and I'm sure a lot of you are very, very bright. But by overlooking this important aspect of this very long exam, they struggle to maintain that performance. In my opinion, it's better to get 6.5, 6.2 and a 3A than to get 7.5 and a 3.2 and a 2.5A. Do you see, it's all about consistency. And with that, I want to finish this video. Once again, I would like to thank Medify for making possible this video, but also for the fantastic BMAT question bank, which you can use over the next few days to really enhance your revision, on top of the past papers, on top of the other revision you've done. Use these resources, use these tips, and go smash that BMAT. Now, over the next few days, I will try to make a few videos where I go through questions on a whiteboard, because I think a lot of you do want that. I'll explain the science behind some section 2 questions, and also seeing me work through the questions could give you an idea of how you can tackle certain questions in section 2. So watch out, and as always, keep working hard, and I'll see you guys soon in the next video. Bye bye.